Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of BlackInc.TV. My name is Tony Beeman, and our mission is to simply inspire the next generation of Black entrepreneurs to think big and go for it. And you know what? That's exactly what my next guest is. What does the word Xena mean? Well, I looked it up, and you know what it means? A tough, physical confident woman and that's exactly what she is she my next guest is an actress architectural designer graduated from tuskegee university uh and actually earning a master's degree in real estate development from auburn at the same time right now oh my goodness but don't let that fool you you want to go big she has produced construction documents and renderings that have produced over $475 million in state, federal contracts. Oh my goodness, I don't wanna to give too much away, but $475 million, that's almost a half billion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the great Zena Stryker. Zena, thank you for being here. Hello everyone, hi Tony. Thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. I really, really feel so special <laughs> with the way that you introduced me. Thank you so much, Tony, and thank you for having me here. Absolutely. Well, you know what? I wanna start with your name itself. <laughs> Zena, oh my goodness. You know, you know. first of all, you look like a superhero. <laughs> your name sounds like a for real superhero movie, oh. comic series. It's awesome. I'm sure you get that all the time. I do. Tell, tell us about your name. Okay, so my the story behind my name is very, very interesting. So I did not grow up like the typical architect from a family where your grandfather's an architect and you kind of get grandfathered in. Heck no. I grew up in the hood. <laughs> um, <laughs> my father was actually in prison when I was born. So I think he went in maybe like five months into my mother's pregnancy. So while he was incarcerated, he um, took on the faith of uh, Nation of Islam. So he followed um, Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X. So he thought I would be a boy and he wanted to name me for the great Malcolm X. Well, that didn't happen. I came out a girl. So he wanted to keep the X, you know? So the X, um, he was thinking hard about it and he wanted something strong to show, show strength. So he came up with Zena. And then um, my mother's side of the family is very bougie. And they were just like, oh, no, you have this con in prison naming this girl for a nation of Islam and all of this stuff, all this political stuff. That's a baby. Leave that baby alone. <laughs> and so, like, I didn't have an, a name for a while. And, you know, X represents the unknown, like in a mathematic equation. So I'm in the hospital with no name. Right. And so this flower blooms. And um, it's a jasmine flower in my grandma's backyard. And they're like, just name her Jasmine. That's softer. And then so they did that, but my father would not let up. So when he came out, he just kept calling me Zena with an X. Like, I'm going to keep calling her that. And then everybody just kept calling me that. And that's just what I went by because there's no other one out there. And in terms of Stryker, that's not my born last name. The way that I got the last name Stryker, I was working at this architectural firm. I was the only African-American female. There was, um, I think, 200 employees. And oh, my God, I, I literally had to fight every day. But the man that hired me, his last name was Stryker. And um, he, you, in a field like architecture, you need people to advocate for you. You have to have that. So this was a white man, last name Stryker, advocating for me. So um, I'm drawing during the day and acting at night. So I'm an actress on this TV show. I'm sure you all have heard of it. It's called P Valley, down in the valley where the girls get naked. <laughs> so <laughs> I needed a last name for my IMDb credits. So I'm just like, I need something cool. So I call up architect Stryker and I'm like, yo, can I get your last name? And he's like, I usually don't give out my last name, but you better make good use of it, girl. And so Zena Stryker was born. So that's my name. Uh, that is that is phenomenal. That is phenomenal. You know, since you you go you're going ahead and talking about uh the actress thing, you know, um 
I, I, I read somewhere, and I get this. I mean, this is crazy. I, I, I read that you actually drove to Tyler Perry Studios. Um, you, you, you auditioned your first speaking role on your lunch break. Yeah. And, and you, drove, you drove to the studio, changed clothes, auditioned, you know, uh, went back to work. Yeah. And just resumed work, and then all of a, I'm, I'm, and then all of a sudden you you land um, a role. Can you talk about that? That's that's incredible. Yeah. So when I first started um, with the TV show, they didn't have they weren't picked up yet, and it's something called pilot season that typically happens between like November and February. That's when they start filming these pilots and they shop them out. So I got a phone call to um, be a dancer and they needed us to film at the pink pony south which is like in forest park like right outside of atlanta and you know i was wondering why they would call me atlanta is like strip club culture so i'm like (laughs) why are they calling an architect you know but when you film your own set sometimes 14 hours You know, and there is like a lot of rules that you have to follow and if you know anything about the dancers in atlanta that ain't gonna happen like <laughs> they needed girls that were going to be on time, be there the whole time, not do any alcohol or drugs and follow directions. So it it's kind of like the rhyme of the ancient mourner, um, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. So they're, they're calling me like, Zena, can you come and do this pilot? So I go to the Pink Pony South and I mean, I'm dancing, I'm doing this. And then um, months later, it gets picked up by Stars and Lionsgate. And so they called me to um, audition for the role of toy. And so I'm thinking to myself, if I take this role, I'm already in a male dominated field and I'm pretty and people give me a hard time. Can you imagine me being a seasoned regular as a stripper on TV? Even though it's just acting, people Mm -hmm. will probably have an issue with that. So I went to Tyler Perry Studios on my lunch break, auditioned, landed the role and came back and got back in Revit, you know, drawing the plans or whatever. So when I landed the role, I let the um, I let them know I love this show, but I think it may be damaging to my architectural career because people are very jealous hearted and I don't want to fall victim to someone's insecurities. The fact that I can do both and some people just don't even know how to express themselves artistically in their personal lives, that could really ruin me. So I said, you know, call me back for something smaller. And they called me back to play Lil Murder's number one fan. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. So they started filming my scenes at night so that I could draw during the day. So I'm literally getting paid $12.50 over eight plus time and a half overtime every single day. Mm. I'm making a lot of money. And then they were so accommodating because they loved the fact that I was a black female architect. They wanted me to do voiceovers. So they found a studio next to my architectural firm. So on my lunch break, I'm going to a studio on my architect, like architecture lunch break, doing voiceovers for P-Valley and coming back, drawing in Revit. And again, I'm at this firm with nothing but people that don't look like me. And they think they're like having the greatest time with their microaggressions and being rude to me. But none of them know that I have way more money than them. I have IMDb credits. I'm living the life. I'm getting picked up in a Mercedes Sprinter van. I have my own trailer on Tyler Perry Studios next to the Oval. They know nothing that this is going on. And they're just being lame and condescending at work. So once I got enough money to chunk the deuces, that's what I did. I started Mm -hmm. Zenit Design and Marketing Firm. And they found out everything about me via LinkedIn. That's when those condescending co-workers found out that my life was bomb.com. (laughs) <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you're, you're known as Architect Bay, right? Yeah. <laughs> I decided to embrace it because for so long, like I said, I didn't take the main role and I was missing out on so much, you know, like even like what's behind me. I did a music video for 2 Chains, and uh, there was a mock setup kind of similar to this. And um Someone named Tamara Wynn, she's Candy from um, Real Housewives and Escape. That's her best friend. Tamara used to be in a group Escape. She wanted me to put some stuff in the airport for her. So she had money, but didn't know what to do with it. So I started thinking about when I was on set for 2 Chains and what that set looked like. And I just built it out a lot more. 
And I came up with the concept of denim. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it's a store called Denim where you can just buy denim stuff in the airport with accessories like hats and suitcases. So instead of me running away from being a young, attractive millennial in Atlanta, I said, enough is enough. I'm going to embrace this. And yes, I did music videos. Yes, I worked on Tyler Perry Studios. I'm going to combine the two and I'm going to live out loud. I'm going to be architect, babe. I'm no longer going to let jealous hearted people hold me back. Because if you really think about it, whatever it is that people make fun of you about, that's probably your meal ticket. Just embrace mm, it. Mm, mm. That's fantastic. What about now? I'm looking at your background there. You, you, it's, you, it's, you, it's like a virtual store. Yeah. And, and, I, and I love the fact that it's very diverse. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you got men and women. You have uh, a guy in a wheelchair. Yeah. You know, my brother was in a wheelchair. Hey, I mean, I, I notice every little, you know, and t- tell us about that. I mean, I mean, as well as, uh, you know, you, you talked about your company and you know like hey let's you you got a lot of your stuff going on here yeah you know when i design um what makes my firm so different we're called the atlanta design warriors um the way that we design we investigate then we sketch then we build so if i'm designing a group home i'm going to literally pack a sleeping bag and i'm going to go and spend the night with those kids that weekend find out what they need Form follows function. It, I just designed a daycare. I literally worked at a daycare. I'm not going to design anything that I don't understand. I have to think like the consumer. And um, something that gets me, and this is, you know, what's weird. People always talk about the man is holding us back. Now, when when I deal with marginalized people, a lot of times it's us, you know, and it's like you can get a little bit of money and forget where you came from and, for, and, and, and stop advocating. Um, something that I've seen happen a lot in affordable housing, there's a lot of African-Americans that want to get into affordable housing and they'll have like one bid. And you see all these African-Americans fighting over this affordable housing bid, right? And once they get the bid, they start talking down about their own people. And me as the architect, I have to check them from the neck up because like I, like how I included this handicapped person in this rendering, you always want to think about the different people that will be utilizing this. And without them, you wouldn't have any money you know, as a developer. So I've had to check like developers and say, hold on a second. If you miss one paycheck, you'll be just like that person that you're designing for, you know, that that you hired me to design for. So let's not be too high on that high horse. I've heard crazy things like, oh, don't put um, stainless steel in there. Don't put bamboo floor. I'm like, why not? The budget allows (laughs) it. Why not? Why can't they have nice stuff? Why not? Oh, all they're going to do is tear it up. How do you know that? And Mm -hmm. if you think they're going to tear it up, how about you create some type of incentive where once a month they go and learn how to repair things, repair the garbage disposal, fix the toilet, provide those incentives. It'll be less work on you, your maintenance man. And guess what? Affordable housing should be temporary. So when they leave from with you, they will take those lifelong skills and be able to take care of the home that they buy when they leave from with you. A lot of people are not trifling on purpose. A lot of people are not trifling on purpose. It, they just don't know. So mm-hmm. if you teach them, your property will be kept up a lot better. And then you will be doing a service to marginalized people. But never forget that if you miss one paycheck or maybe two paychecks, you will be just like the people that you're creating communities for. So mm-hmm. that's what's different about me. I always understand that form follows function and I must design for the consumer, not the owner. Wow, you know, there seems to be an incredible, incredible need and opportunity for diversity within, within construction, particularly for women, women of color. Uh, you, we've got this brand new infrastructure package that's come out. You know, I mean, hey, what, 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 what kinds of things uh, do you see that you can inspire? some, you know, some of our audience, you know, with, because, I mean, you're doing some incredible things, just like you just talked about, you know, and there's, and you're not letting anything hold you back. Well, only 0.3% of architects are Black women. I'm going to say that again, only 0.3% of architects are Black women. That's not even 1%. Mm. So what I want to do is inspire girls to be both beauty and brains. I promise you can be both. 
You know how people say, oh, don't be eye candy, be soul food. Uh, you can be both. You we can you can be the candy yams, boo. You can, yeah, I promise you can take care of the way that you look and still be smart, you know. And I want girls to kind of step away from the whole, oh, I just want to do hair, makeup, and lashes. Or I got an online boutique and then, you know, they're all selling these clothes made out of do-rag material. Like, come on, girl. <laughs> like, use your brain. We really need you out here in fields that make the world go around. Because there's always going to be war, war, so you need lawyers. There's always going to be disease, so you need doctors. And there's always going to be a need for shelter. So you need architects and, and construction managers. You need those types of things. And there's so much room at the table. Um, there is a huge project in Atlanta coming up called the Gulch Project with uh, Centennial Yards. They need 38% um, female participation in terms of bidding. Like they need us wow. in order to put things inside of the airport. I think there's like a clause where there has to be a uh, 50% uh, minority or MBEs. You know, there is room for us. So don't sell yourself short by just going into these superficial industries or industries where you get attention instead of the compensation and um, intellectual payoff that you deserve. I promise, ladies, you can do it. Um, there are a lot of men in these industries, but no one really pays attention the way that women do. You can ask a man to do something. He's going to say, OK, I'll do it. And you come back the next day. It is not done. You know, so like with me and my team designs and builds, I'm going to go behind those construction workers. And if if it's paint dripping, I'm going to put a sticky note and the whole wall will look like a polka dot, because at the end of the day, you're going to fix that wall. If I go back and punch and check, I'm going to sit on every toilet and rock that toilet. If it's wiggling, somebody's going to go and fix that dang on toilet. You don't really get that type of insight from a man. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be misogynistic when I say this. It's just. Some guys, they have their ego and they just say, do it, da, 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 versus women, we have passion, you know? So there's room at the table for more, more women. Wow. There's so much to talk about. We, we're going to have to have another, another show. I want to have you respectful of, of your time, you know, but, but before we, we, we go, what's, what's next for, for you, super woman? I mean, you know, you. <laughs> You know what I love, you know, I mean, like, you know, we talked, we started talking about your name and, and, and you, you represent, you know, I mean, it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, what, 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 what's, what's, what's next on, on the horizon for you? You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, you got, I'm sure you got some movies. Oh my goodness. Design show coming. Um, I was offered by the number one network for design shows. Unfortunately, that network caters to homes. And um, I didn't want to fall into that category of, you know, flipping homes. Like, that's not what I do. I think um, that's boring. I think it's whack. I think, and I told the network that and they laughed. They said it's actually true, but oh well. I was like, you know, no no disrespect when people watch this, this network while they're waiting in the pharmacy office to get their uh, prescription filled or your grandma's watching it after she retired, you know? And I don't think Zinda Striker, I, I don't want to be on this network um, being whack sorry you know so i decided to take my pilot footage and um shot to other networks and um the producers i had at the time were the same producers as the property brothers and i just noticed that like um the way that they film there was no way they could capture my personality there, there was no way you know so that's what's coming up next i'm not certain uh, where we are with shopping but hopefully within the next year we'll be purchased and we'll be on the air Wow, really, really, really appreciate you sharing all that. I'm gonna be looking. I know everybody's gonna be looking out <laughs> for you. You know, on, on a month, TV, on, on the internet. You know, I mean, uh, we there's so much we didn't get to. You got a furniture line. Yeah. You know, talk mm -hmm. yeah, real quick. Talk about that real fast. Striker accents. It's like that sexy eclectic Ooh. furniture. Think about the movie. Um, what was the guy? He was like, "You'll shoot your eye out." Um. A Christmas story, and it was a sexy lamp with <laughs> so <laughs> think of that like souped up, you know, with like wallpaper that that's fishnet stockings. Um, remember the episode of Martin where um kid came to see Shanae, and mm -hmm, it was like forever mm -hmm. oh, Shanae, <laughs> and it was like the bed was made out of like lips or whatever. <laughs> so it's like that, but it's for hotel boutique hotels, a really gaudy type of environments um the furniture is they're real conversation pieces fantastic 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Zayna Stryker, thank you again. That's all the time we have for today. I'm going to put my LinkedIn profile link here at the bottom of the page. Hit me up on LinkedIn. Once again, thank you for watching. Zayna Stryker, thank you. We look thank forward you to seeing you on our next, on our next edition of Black Ink TV.